So we're going to take a look at how to prove the law of excluded middle. So this is kind of a tautology that either P or its negation always holds. And it's a useful thing for us to uh, sort of have in place because as an explicit rule, it means we don't have to go through this many step process to always use this in, inside of part of our proofs. Um, in, in later sessions, you'll see how we could use the law of excluded middle uh, in proving other uh, sequence that we would like to. But in this one, we're actually going to prove this law of excluded middle uh, from first principles. Okay? So I'm going to minimize this and bring up Jape for us here. And what we're going to show is that without any premises, we can find that P or not P uh, is a tautology for us. Okay? So the first step is to work backwards and say, um, through proof of contradiction, we're going to assume its negation and then try to lead to a bottom, right? And so this is kind of a, uh, a two-step process where you're adding a negation and then you're going to remove the negation there as part of the proof. Um, it looks a little odd at first, but you'll see how this allows us to actually go through and improve this tautology. So in a forward step, if we were to do negation elimination, um, then it, it leads us back to uh, you know our uh, consequent that we actually want to try and achieve. Now this is inside the scope, so we can't just take line four and say, hey, we've already uh, done this, and so we're all set. Uh, you need to instead uh, lead to this particular P or not P from just starting with uh, the not P or not P. Right? So uh, the next step here is if we were to look at this, um, you know, it's a simple disjunction. And so working backwards, we want to use uh, a disjunction introduction in order to achieve this. Right? So in the backwards, disjunction introduction, um, we're going to, and we have the choice to preserve left or preserve right, uh, but following uh, the proof that you saw Professor Ellis do, we're going to be preserving the right here and trying to lead to the fact that not P holds, given the assumption that not P or not P holds. Okay. Um, now, in this uh, step, if we take a look at uh, what we're trying to prove here, the top level operator that we have is uh, a negation. And so working backwards, uh, we might have a negation introduction to do this, okay? And so if we assume P and we can lead to bottom, then we know that not P holds, right? So we're getting closer and closer to what we're trying to get at here. Um, now you'll notice that P is very close to what we have up here. And so starting with this, we can do a forward step to say um, a disjunction introduction. And what we're going to be doing is introducing the or of not P. Uh, now in JAPE, you need to do a, a couple of steps in order to, to actually make that stick. Uh, but to make it match this, uh, this formula that you see up here, the signature of it, we want to introduce or invent something on the right. right? So we're going to hold on to the P, invent something on the right, and now we need to lock in that uh, not P and B1 are the same. Right? Um, and so from this point, in order to get the fact that we are, and we could have swapped these two steps, in order to get the fact that we're going to try and use this and uh, its negation to sort of entail bottom, uh, what we're doing is uh, this negation elimination. So in a forward step, negation elimination here, this gives us what it is that we're trying to achieve. Now you see this is very, very close. We now have the two signatures that look uh, very much alike, right? P or, and uh, the, the final thing. Because we invented this, we can sort of unify it uh, as long as it matches um, the two different formulas. And so as we've seen in some previous lessons, we can use the hypothesis here to lock those two together, right? So to recap the, the full setup here, we're proving by contradiction this tautology that we have. And so it assumes uh, the negation of it here. And if we were to use De Morgan's, which is something that you'll see a little bit later on in the course, it, it basically rewrites this to say, uh, you know, P or not P, if you were to negate that, it's saying that uh, P and P hold simultaneously. And obviously that can't happen, like that's a contradiction. And so that's essentially what's happening inside of this odor box here, you're proving that you know, saying that P and not P hold at the same time is inherently a contradiction. Um, so this completes the, the proof for the law of excluded middle. And what you'll find is inside of JAPE, uh, we actually give this to you uh, if you're using the, the course theory uh, for the proofs that you're doing. And so you can invent this law of excluded middle and then align it with um, other propositions that you have in the proof. And so in the next lesson, we'll actually see how to use this law of excluded middle uh, proof step inside of your deduction proofs.